right. Thanks for joining us. Now on the on the uh, program, we we'll certainly will be setting the stage this morning on the protests across Nigeria, in Nigeria, in Lagos, in Abuja, and uh, also in Oshun State and parts of uh, Port Harcourt and all of that. We have with us with here Alistair Wilcox, and we expect to have also Idris Usman join us from Abuja as we get along. Now, uh, Alistair, let's. Let's start it this way. From what you saw yesterday, would you say the protest was a success or is a success so far? The national stadium venue of the I Stand with Nigeria Lagos protest filled up slowly as protesters walked in one after another. Despite the Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Technology could always mm. have some funny words. No, of course. Yes. Mm. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't know how to gauge if the protest was successful or not because I wasn't there. And I don't know the messages that were passed apart from the snippets I get from the from your uh, uh, stupid, from your uh, news line and other uh, news channels. But uh, the fact is, and which is which has been established over and over, is the fact that protest is a democratic right of the people. In every democracy, uh, people must be allowed to express their opinion, their views. It could be one man, it could be the whole crowd. Now the important thing is, uh, what message are you trying to pass? Has that message been passed? Was it received? By whoever you're passing it to, and I think the the, the the fewer the better because if a protest become too large, uh, it might lose the appeal because other uh, external factors might come into bear to play, and then uh, it could also end up not too well. But if the the protesters were able to uh, have a small crowd, a manageable crowd, and able to pass a message, a clear message, if they've been able to pass a clear message as to what they are protesting about. And I think we can see it's successful. But if it is just the same rhetoric, oh, we are suffering, Nigerians are suffering, oh, we are suffering, Nigerians are suffering, and nothing substantial is being passed on to government as to how this suffering or where it's coming from or what's supposed to be done, or how it's supposed to be done. And I think it, it, it should, I, I, will, I, I was quite a complete failure. By rhetorics, you mean high cost of uh, food commodity? By rhetorics, you mean the skyrocketing inflation figure what are the rhetorics exactly yes um we've been we've been living in uh, sentiments too, for too long uh, other than in some facts now i'm not saying when i mean rectors i mean we, we have we house everything to one basket nigerians are dying nigerians are suffering nigerians are dying nigerians are suffering no no water no food no light no this that is the rhetorics now who is this progress who, who i mean who is the a protest is targeted to. I mean, who is your target audience? And that is where we begin to solve the problems. Who are you targeted? Now, I remember in few protests that, that uh, I have been involved in, for instance, the 2000, January 2012 protest, it was specific. We're talking about increase in fuel price. And everybody went for that. Because that was the jugular. need then. Yeah, that was the need. Okay, so went for now, that if what they are saying now, now has, yeah. we are warehousing everything into a basket and everybody is looking at Abuja that is the truth of the matter everybody is looking at Abuja and sometimes we analysts must always try we may not we, let, let's not dance let's not play the ostrich and dance to the uh, popular whims and caprices of the people and confuse them more and uh, and increase their blood pressure because most analysts will come on studios we begin to bombard yeah we begin to bring out things say things that something you cannot even defend on your own properly and you begin to you are not putting the problems where they belong to as to why is this happening at this point in time and in order to, to, to in order to properly attack government you should be able to also have educated yourself educated those who are who are listening to because we form opinion we mold opinion analysts we're educated we're intellectual that's why you bring us to the studio and so we should be able to conceptualize the problems we pigeonhole them into where they belong to who is responsible for food production and food price increase? Is it the federal government, state government, or local government? Who are we attacking in that direction? Who is responsible for power? Is it the federal government, state government, or local? Who are we attacking? Who is responsible for water to provide you water in your homes? Is it the federal, state, or local? Who are we attacking? Now, these are the pigeon holes that we must situate the problem for it to have meaning. Because today, I like the protesters that are all looking up to Abuja. Oh, Buare has failed Nigeria. Oh, you promised us change. Blah, 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 blah. So that is the noise, and that's the rectors I'm talking about here. Now, if you're talking about food production, it's a localized uh, 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 service. 
Local governments have departments of agriculture. Mm. State governments have ministers of full-fledged ministers of agriculture. Mm. Ministers and budgets are made on there every day. Federal government has its own uh, district. So who Even the private is sector. responsible for increased food producti production and cheaper cost of good food? I think we should start from that angle. Now, talking about water and uh, um, water, yes, these are, these are part of the directors that we have. Who is responsible for providing water in your homes? Water for all by the year 2000. I had it when I was in the university <laughs> in 19, in, in fact, in, when I entered the university in 1988. Mm. I had water for all by the year 2000. Mm. And we thought 2000 was an Eldorado. Meanwhile, when I was growing up in Portacot, when I was growing up as a young girl in Portacot, every tap runs mm -hmm. in, the, in the city. In your, kitchen, in your kitchen, everywhere you can. There, I, used to, I, I always give this. And there used to and be you a can fight. drink straight from it. Straight from mm. it. There used to be this fight between my house. I was living in Bonnie Street in 84. There was a house behind us, is Creek Road, number 32. There's an upstairs. What brings us fight every day is when they are, they are, the children is having bed up in their shower. Up, it didn't uh, force into our own compound. And we start quarreling and start fight. That was how it, it was. It used to be. Now, everybody's looking up to federal government for water, for water in your kitchen. And so we're not situating the problem. That is why a protest will fail because you are saying the wrong, you are saying the right thing, but maybe to the wrong uh, audience, to the wrong party. I'm not saying I'm not. Uh, I'm eluding the federal government in, in 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 any aspect. Like Nigeria runs a well, people say it's not a true federation, but we run, the, we run the federation. The states are autonomous of their resources and they have their own. Uh, uh, they have their own responsibility. Even local government, we used to have local government roads. We used to have state government roads. We have federal roads. So okay. we must situate these issues right. clearly. We had we, we had a going, guest yesterday, so that we can know what we are doing. Where again, again was here yesterday, and he said for him, uh, the the uh, indices for measuring how successful an administration or a government is is based on the campaign promises of that incoming government Great. these are the promises you have made you're coming in so how far have you been able to fulfill make good your words good. on those promises Great. as a nigerian yes you know what the promises were yes how would you rate the government i would i would, I would uh, look promises are time bound and issues must be treated within the concept of time you see solving a national problem is not a microwave uh, 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 approach a microwave, if you have your food already made, what do you do with the microwave? Already made food, you just come out from work, you put it in the microwave, three, three, the, uh, 30 seconds, sometimes three minutes, one minute, the food is done, you are eating it. Now, it is different as a woman, you know when you want to cook a pot of soup. You first of all need to go to the market, buy the ingredients, come back home, begin to prepare the ingredients. And the same microwave, the, the time you have done already made food and the microwave are not the same thing. So that is where time comes into play. I'm not making excuses for government, for either state, local, or federal. But they say, we must understand the problem. Yes, the, I don't know the promises that we are talking about. You're in Nigeria. Were you not here in 2015? I was here. I was, so I was following can, the campaign. You can't remember any of the promises? I was following the campaign. Of course, everybody promised good life. Change. Well, I mean, good life. We're going to uh, uh, improve the economy. We're going to do We're going to do we're going, that's, Those are the promises. Now, are these promises failed? So far, they are failing because they've not been achieved. You've not seen it in their pocket. But what about those other promises? Improvement on, on infrastructures, improvement on, I mean, uh, 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 looking at government, the governance, fighting corruption. Have we given this government a chance in any of those areas? <laughs> now, let us look at it. And, and I was trying to talk about price of goods. And that is why I'm very, very concerned because I, I feel the cost, the price of goods. I feel the cost of living. I feel it very badly. I feel it, I, I, I feel the pinch. But tell me, my dear sister, will I not go and start blaming federal government that a uh, cough of Ogbono moved from 400 naira to 600 naira? <laughs> okay. I will now go and start blaming Buhari for yeah, that. Yeah. I, I, on I, the I, things that we are supposed as Nigerians to do for ourselves, and we all hide under the cloak that everything, and, and, that is, and that's the rhetoric. And we are not attacking those who are supposed to attack. We are not, we are saying, we're, we're saying if the cost of gari goes up in the market, we're not start blaming federal government for cost of gari. Okay, that Alistair, we'll, we'll go to government. Abuja, let's, but let's, when let's we bring, come back, we'll, we'll talk more we are, about yes, that. Yes, let's yeah. expand let, let, let me bring, let me bring Terence. Where we are, what, what we are supposed to be doing, and mm. we we'll fight government on those that we're supposed to fight them All right. and get the things. Uh, All right. Let, let's bring in Terence Kwanum here from the Coalition for Good Governance and Change Initiative. Terence, good morning. Uh, joining us from uh, our Abuja studio, Terence. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, you, you are there in, in Abuja. Can you tell us how successful would you rate the protest so far that took place yesterday? Uh, well, yesterday was a, a very wonderful civil action call by the people of Nigeria. 
uh, coming out in mass to stand with Mr. President and his policies. And uh, those of us that are anchors that have come together to form this coalition, uh, we believe so much in the policies and ideas of Mr. President. Uh, because the challenges we face as a nation are the basic things that he's bringing to us. Uh, we are a nation that has lost our tradition and our values. We were a people that before democracy came in 1999 were surviving and the most successful people in this country were business people and uh, farmers. We had traders, we had business people, they were successful. Everything was going in this country very fine. Then all of a sudden, uh, democracy came and we lost our values. People felt that it's all about getting political office, going to bail people, going to loot our, uh, everything we have as a nation. It became a problem for us. Today we have gotten a president that have restored our values. There is discipline in this. Lands we live for 16 years. These lands can also... Today, yam is expensive, rice is expensive, swagun is expensive, corn is expensive, maize is expensive. The same land that we were tilling and we were getting these products, can't we go back to the basics? We have our values. Nigerians are people of integrity. We are hardworking people. A president has given us a platform to restore our values. Is that a crime? All right. This is uh, the basic thing that we've been addressing. Yeah. Terence, we'll, we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. Let's uh, go on a break. And uh, we are going out on TVC Entertainment. The viewers there can continue with TVC Breakfast on TVC Nigeria, on Contact Channel 190 and DSTV Channel 418. Go TV. It is 45 and AC TV 510. Let's continue the conversation back. Glad to have you back. You're watching TVC Breakfast. And our first big story this morning is uh, the scorecard for the cold protest uh, yesterday in Abuja, in uh, Podakot, in other parts of the country. Hashtag I stand with Nigeria. Hashtag one voice, whichever one tickles your fancy. And we have with us in the studio our guest, uh, Alistair Wilcox, who is a uh, public affairs analyst. And in Abuja, Terence Kwanum is of the Coalition for Good Governance and Change Initiative. All right. Now, uh, some of the protesters also marched to the house of the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu in Lagos. Let's listen to the address to them. You voted on our promise. Very well, sir. We are just two years into that promise. Compared to 16 years, that they took over, that they could have made the changes. Yes, they are working on the electricity. Without electricity, there could be no industrialization and explosion of employment opportunity for our people. I remain in the party because we will retool this party. We will retool this government. A damage of over 60 years and 60 years of misgovernance cannot be turned around overnight. Let's hang on to hope. There is nothing more effective that can drive you, you know, better than hope and belief in a positive tone of uh, this situation. There you go. Right. Hope and belief. And the governance. All right, now, Alistair, when it comes to, in fact, the whole idea of this protest is the the perception in the minds of Nigerians that governance is not really going down well the way they want. That's why there's complaint here, there's complaint there that even led to people to come out on the streets in the first place. Now, you just listen to that uh, 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 footage. When it comes to governance, are Nigerians really satisfied by the fact that yes, it is true, 16 years progress was made but not to the satisfaction of Nigerians, but now we have two years of this government for an, another political party. Governance is ongoing, yes. but we are still not satisfied. Because you see, because like I said earlier, because the 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 the, 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 the parameters of analysis are mm. different. Okay. Now, one thing that was not good for this government is the uh, how this government emerged. It came through one of the worst and most bitter fought election. That election divided the country so badly along tribal, along ethnic, along political lines. 
and that has not healed. And so from day one, from May 29th, people are saying, oh, where is it? Look, and as I said, the noise. And people were just uh, uh, hysterically shouting, oh, we want this change. Where is it? We've not seen change. Any day your light goes off, you forgot that you've never had light before for days. The day your light goes off, you say, oh, this is the worst. So Nigerians must come to learn a few things. And just like Ashwadi said, and that is quite spot on. Ashwadi said, look, a two-year government that inherited one of the worst economic indices in our national life, with a government that inherited, oh look, it, it, it is not the making of this government that we have depended on only on oil as a source of foreign exchange. Now, you inherited an oil price that was at $30 from about 170 80 You inherited a depleted external reserve. Now, you just must know this. You can't, you can't, you can't run away from those facts. A depleted foreign reserve of, you, 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 you had less than 30 billion in foreign reserve. A depleted one. And Nigerians have grown to be import dependent. What you can buy locally, no, you don't want to buy it. You want to get from abroad and you don't pay Naira to get from abroad. You have, you merited that, that, that problem. So, and you are now assessing a government of 18 months and said everything should have been elderly, you should have your microwave result. Then you are not being fair to your own self. But, but, but are, are these, but are the these strategies? Yes, the are, protesters are, are holding the government to the promises they made. Which of the government? Please which listen. Of, which of the government? No, I'm coming, madam. Which of the government? Is it the federal government or the state government? Lagos State alone. The federal I'm coming, sir. Okay. I'm coming, ma'am. Lagos State alone spends about, in this economy of Lagos, spends about, I'm talking about the government, spends about 40 billion every month in Lagos State. Are you saying they're not working? Are you, saying, are you saying Lagos is not working? Are you saying that Lagos is not investing so much in agriculture? We all ate uh, uh, lake rice in December. Are you saying you are not working? Power is not part of Lagos. Uh, power is, is, I mean, is a federal. So that is federal government. But in terms that. of food and other things, are you saying Lagos is not working? Alistair. If you go to other states, are you saying the economic movement are, are not doing, going on? But we, we, mis we misinform the people every time. We have this bias about the, about the government and we misinform the people. Sometimes when we want to correct the people, you say, oh, you are, it's as if you are not in the, I'm in the economy. I feel it. I feel the pain of everything. But how will I hold Madame Buhari responsible when a cup of a goose goes up in the market? When a bono goes up, when fish goes up in the market? When the things I'm print local goes in the market? Why should I hold them responsible? Those are the issues that we must tell the public and hold the government accountable to the fact that they All must right. create employment, mm. they must expand the economy to create more jobs, they must expand the economy to increase a, a, a source of foreign, of, a, a foreign revenue okay. so that we can have a, a robust economy. Right. Those we show the government accountable for. We are not done with this. We are still no, coming I, back on this. We need to get some of these issues out one after the other. Well, and I'm I, ready. I, I'd like us to do that. I, I'm ready. But let's, let's go to Abuja now. And Abuja, um, Terence, sorry, you heard Ashwajut there saying uh, perhaps the new mantra now is hope and believe. Can Nigerians be that patient? Yeah, Nigerians need to be patient. The word that we even need from Nigerians at the moment is that we need to be patriotic. I am leading the National Coalition Against terror uh, Terrorism. I did a rally in Medugui last week. Uh, I, will, I have been to the Northeast. I've been to about 15 local governments in, in Borono. I've been to about five in Adamawa and Yobe. If we look at the patriotism that our, our service people are putting in, that are getting results, and then we, the citizens, are refusing to be patriotic. Like when I started, I told you that in this country, we are a country of values and traditions. Before democracy came, that everybody has turned his attention to government, we were doing things. Uh, before 99, I have never seen a Nigeria that was successful as a politician. And I have never seen a, a, uh, a tribe in Nigeria that is a tribe of politicians. I know you are from Benue, you are a farmer, or you are from, uh, uh, you are from Rivers, you are a fisherman. This is where the values we had heard. This is where what was surviving us. What has happened to them? We have to go to the basis. We have to ask ourselves the questions. Don't we have a platform to go back to this thing? Must we keep coming back to the center that want to be politicians? This politics is not a career. Mm. Keep depending on politics. We will not get it right. We have to be patriotic and get back to our values. We will stop complaining. Because if whatever that have increased in price today, it is supposed to be all of our benefit. If I farm rice today in my place in Benue, and I sell the rice at whatever price that is rising, would it be to my advantage? Would it grow the local economy? This is what we are refusing to do. We left our traditional values, and that is what we are suffering from there. We have gotten the platform. And let me tell you, if there is no healing, there can never be a greatness. 
what we are going through is a healing process of the damage that has caused to this nation. But the, by the generation I belong to in this country, by the time we were growing up, the primary schools we were attending were, were being taught by professors in Ghana. That was the healing process of Ghana. Today we are celebrating Ghana because they have gone through the healing process. They are celebrating their greatness today. That is what Nigerians are refusing to do. And instead of them going back to the basis, they come back to attack government and maybe feel that they will get the results they used to get in the government that has just passed. They, will, they thought this change that has come to this country was maybe to change the identities of people that were going to share our, our, our common wealth. All right, Terence. They now discover that. Terence. That like yeah, yeah, Terence, let me ask you this. Uh, are you saying that the timing of this protest, uh, the timing is wrong? Is that what you're saying? We are rather coming out to stand for Mr. President and there is no need protesting for the policies of government because the government has given us a platform to survive as a nation. Uh, let me be honest with you. The people that were coming out to protest, if we even ask them the basic values and the traditions from where they come from. You are from Lagos. Before 1999, uh, the biggest name we hear from Lagos were the Moshu that Biola. They were the successful business people from Lagos. You go to, you go to uh, Kano, you hear of Alahaji Dantata. These people were not politicians. These people were business people. They were relating with farmers. And that was why the economy was growing at that level. The economy cannot grow around politicians. This economy must grow uh, from what we do. Not by uh, going, uh, going to be, uh, be politicians and stealing our money. We are saying no to that. And that is why we are standing with the president. All right, Terence. Uh, th thank you, Terence. Uh, we, we have to end somehow. But, uh, Alistair, before we end, let, let me ask you this quickly. I know you have so many things to say, and uh, Busalami has so many questions <laughs> to ask you. <laughs> but what do you think is the way forward on this? Because youths coming together with one yes. voice is their right one way or the other. But what there, should be the way forward? No, there is no question about right to voice out. Mm. The issues and which I'm conversing is the fact that this 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 protest must be targeted at the right sources. Let's protest about the states uh, that are not working. No, you see, part of why the the, the protest had issues, had an issue, was the fact that when people look at, I mean, when Two Face was the face of the project, people begin to cast as, I mean, begin to look at the character behind it. When a fire or she will want to identify with a Two Face to carry a project, a fire that has not paid salaries of his people. The fact that has that I don't know what he has done for a kitty, and you are now com complaining about the about the federal government. Everybody looking about the, uh, to the federal government. We have been saying over and over. When the nine delta issue is coming up, we said hold your state governors accountable first. Hold your state governors accountable so that before you begin to talk about. But why is it that when it comes to other areas? We don't talk about our state government. Nonetheless, that doesn't reduce the human rights, the fundamental no, no, human no, no, no. rights that they it have, does not. that the it does not. It does not. But that they see, can protect. If you are doing your human rights, and you are doing, if you are firing shot, and you are firing the, a right shot at the wrong target, you won't hit any sources. But if you are firing the right source, the right uh, bullet at the right target, now that's why I said these issues must be pigeonholed. They will not all come to one basket and begin to shout. It must be pigeonholed. What are the issues that you know the federal government is not doing? Today, Lagos Ibanez Express Road is being worked upon. This is a federal road. All and, right. And the kind uh, of activity is generated. And other things. Mm. The states should take up responsibility of food production mm. and let the price of food come down. The federal right. government will support them and let there be a better, robust economy for everyone to live in. All and right. Be happy about. Alistair, we'll right. thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you so very much. And uh, Terence Kwanum, thank you for joining us from our Abuja studio. Uh, let's go on a break and we come back to discuss our next topic.